Hey friends, uh, my name is Reverend Rick Brown and welcome to St. James United Church for our online worship service today. You know, today we're going to be talking about greed and selfishness in a post-Trumpian world. In, in a world where greed and selfishness have become normalized and too many people are forgetting the values of sharing and caring. But before we do that, I wanna take a moment to remember one year ago today. This is the anniversary of the first Sunday that we were forced to worship online. The first Sunday where thanks to COVID, we were prevented from worshiping here in person. So I want to take a minute and just savor this space, the memory of this space that you haven't been able to enter for over a year that only me and some of our worship team have been able to enter because it's likely gonna be at least another half a year before we'll be able to be back here again. So let's take a minute and remember our time in worship here and remember and pray for those who have lost their lives due to the pandemic. Pray for the healthcare workers who have been overwhelmed. Pray for the researchers who have created and are manufacturing the vaccines. Pray for the frontline workers who get paid like peasants and put their lives at risk daily by exposing themselves to hundreds of customers, too many of whom selfishly refuse to care for others by following COVID protocols. And also to thank God for giving us the strength to make it this far. You know, a year ago, it's hard to believe, a year ago today, we thought we would only be displaced from this place for two weeks. How naive we were. But God has not abandoned us. God has strengthened us and we have adapted and we are thriving in isolation because we have learned to care and share. So savor this time and this place. Our scripture passage today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Let's listen for the Word of God. This is the story of the rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried in, ha buried. in Hades, where he was being tormented. He looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in cool water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during 
your lifetime, you received good things and Lazarus in like manner, evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm. A great chasm has been fixed so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said to them, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said to them, said to him, if they do not listen to, to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I saw the rich ones, I saw what they gave. The widow who offered two pennies, she saved. And I saw she was smiling, I knew she was glad. And I wondered because she gave all that she had. But with God the world is turned upside down. The poor are embraced and the lost they are found. Let's work for a world where all people are free, where it's good to feel good about God, loving you and me. I saw Zacchaeus, a sinner, they said, but to his house I saw Jesus go to break bread. And I knew something special had happened that day. When Zacchaeus gave half of his riches away. But with God the world is turned upside down. The poor are embraced and the lost they are found. Let's work for a world where all people are free, where it's good to feel good about God, loving you and me. The men in the vineyards were grumbling one day. I knew they weren't happy with what they'd been paid. For the ones who came later were paid just the same as the workers who greeted the dawn when they came. But with God, the world is turned upside down. The poor are embraced and the lost they are found. Let's work for a world where all people are free where it's good to feel good about God, loving you and me. In a, in a post-Trumpian world, greed now has become normalized. And we, the people who follow Jesus, need to claim generosity and sharing back. Today's Bible story is a, a parable that Jesus told. And a parable is a made-up story that's intended to teach us something, a lesson, to help make us think about our relationship with God in a new way. This story never actually happened. It's fiction. But like all good fiction, it has a lesson for us. Jesus 
is telling us a story about a rich man and a poor man named Lazarus. Now, already Jesus gives us a hint as to who is the important one in the story. Because he gives the poor character a name, Lazarus. Whereas the rich man is just a nameless rich man. He isn't important enough to even warrant a name. And yet, he has the biggest speaking part in the entire drama. The rich man has everything in life. A large house, fancy clothes, lots of good food, and probably orange hair and a fake tan. Whereas Lazarus was poor and sick because poverty puts you at a higher risk for poor health. And he lays outside the front gate of the rich man's house every day, begging for food. He would be happy to eat even the table scraps that fall from the rich man's table to the floor. Both of them in this story end up dying. Lazarus goes to heaven to be with Abraham, a venerated ancestor of God's people. And the rich man, well, he's not so lucky. He goes to hell. And now Lazarus, at this point, drops out of the story. Presumably, he's just kind of hanging out in heaven, enjoying the room service and the free gym and spa membership. Whereas the rich man is living in torment. The rest of the story is kind of a conversation between the rich man down in hell and Abraham up in heaven. And it goes something like this. Hey, Abraham, it's miserable down here. It's so hot. I'm in agony. These flames, they're, they're awful. Be nice to me, man, and send Lazarus down here with some cool water. I'd be happy if he just dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue, even just a drop of cool water would be enough. Sorry, dude. Look, you, you had your whole life where you had everything you needed, all the good stuff, all the good stuff you needed, and Lazarus, he suffered right outside your door and you did nothing to help him or anybody else who was in need. So now Lazarus is having a soothing, cooling, refreshing spa day and you're in agony. Funny how that works, eh? Besides, Lazarus couldn't help you if he wanted to. You see this great, huge distance between us? Well, Lazarus, he can't reach down to you from, from up here. That's just the way God designed things. Once you're down there, you're kind of stuck. There's no going back and forth between up here and down there. All right, if it's too late for me, that I have a whole family left behind who are just as greedy and selfish as I was, can you at least maybe send Lazarus back to warn them to smarten up and be nice and, and start sharing their wealth and, and, and maybe they won't end up down here in this place with me? Dude. Again, it doesn't work that way. You had your chance, and so do they. They have all the same great spiritual teachers and lessons from the scriptures that you had, and everybody else has. 
It was your choice to ignore God's teachings about sharing and caring, and they are free to make their own choices too. No, 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 Abraham, please. If someone just came back from the dead to warn them, then for sure they would listen and change their selfish ways. You're really, really not getting this, are you? Nobody forced you to be greedy. You guys, all of you, had the same lessons as everybody else. And it's your family's choice to be greedy just like you. If they didn't listen to all the great spiritual teachers, then they would not even listen if somebody rose from the dead. Hint, hint. Jesus is talking about himself when he says, they wouldn't listen to someone who rose from the dead. Because that's exactly who he is going to be. And the selfish and the greedy will ignore him too. You know, I have a, a friend who is a professional motivational speaker. He speaks in schools and universities to students. And he teaches students about sharing and caring. That's his, one of his big messages, sharing and caring. Because that's really what it's about. To love your neighbor as yourself involves sharing and caring. You can't claim to love your poor neighbor if you leave them begging for your table scraps and don't act to lift them out of poverty. So what would that look like today? Well, this is Dan Price. In his teens, he started his own financial services company, which ended up being very successful. And six years ago, at the age of 31, he was earning $1.1 million a year. And one day, he was talking with his friend Valerie, who had served 11 years in the military, including two tours in Iraq. And she now had to hold down two jobs just to stay afloat. And her landlord just raised her rent another $200 a month, which she couldn't afford. How much money is enough? How much money is enough for rich people, for any of us? Dan realized that he was earning way more than he actually needed to survive on, and that many of his own employees were in exactly the same boat as his friend Valerie. And Dan was raised with the Christian value of sharing and caring. So he took a $1 million pay cut, dropping himself down to $100,000 a year, which is certainly more than enough to live on. And he gave all of his employees a huge raise so that they were all making a minimum of $70,000 a year. And the business world lost their minds over it. The greedy, selfish, rich people in the business world around him were highly triggered by what he'd chosen to do. And they were threatened by his generosity because it shone a light on their greed. And they cried out, socialism, socialism. And they predicted that within a couple of years, Dan's company would go bankrupt in no time. And here we are six years later and his company is thriving. His employees are thriving and happy and he is thriving and happy. And his company is not bankrupt and he's not anywhere near as rich as he used to be but he doesn't need to be. He has more than enough to live on. 
And now his employees also have enough to live on so that they don't have to work multiple jobs just to pay the rent. Unlike the rich man in Jesus' story, Dan Price listened to Jesus' message of sharing and caring. And now you have the chance to do the same thing. A lot of people who are new to the faith have never prayed before. Maybe you're one of them. Some people aren't even sure they know how to pray. And this was true in Jesus' day too. In fact, there was once the, a time when a person asked him how to pray. Jesus, teach me how to pray. So Jesus shared a simple prayer 
that people could memorize and use whenever they couldn't think of the words for themselves. And we've come to call that prayer the Lord's Prayer because it's the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us. So Sophia is going to lead us through a sung version of that prayer in a minute. But I want to highlight a couple of lines from the prayer that are relevant to today's message. When you sing these words, I want you to remember the story of Lazarus and the rich man who didn't even deserve a name. The words are, give us this day our daily bread. In other words, give us what we need to live on. That's all. We don't need more than that. Just give us enough to eat. Give us enough to look after ourselves. Anything more than that is more than we need. Anything more than that is something that we can and should share with others who don't even have enough to get by on. The demand at the local Flamborough Food Bank has more than doubled in recent months. And the second line that I want you to pay attention to is this, lead us not into temptation. Because that's the lesson of today's story. Having more than you need means you have enough to share with others. But having more than you need is also a temptation to be greedy and selfish and want to keep it all to yourself because you think you've earned it. Do you deserve it more than the grocery store clerk who is exposing herself to COVID risk on a daily basis so that you can buy your food? So let's use the words of, of the prayer that Jesus taught us and let's give it a melody so it's easier to memorize. Let's sing and pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, we symbolically leave this place of worship to go into the world to care and share. Even though we still can't leave our homes most of the time for more than essentials, God will still provide you with opportunities to care for others and to share the abundance that you've been given. Maybe even this week. God bless, and we'll see you next week.